Now at six, Missouri law enforcement warn about a new phone scam to look out for. Plus, Arkansas businesses are being impacted by the national truck driver shortage. We'll hear from some business owners. And we take a look at how President Biden is honoring the three fallen troops killed in Jordan. The four states most watched news starts now. A warning about scammers claiming to be representatives of Missouri local law enforcement asking for donations. This is KOAM News at 6. I'm Elise Snowy. Chris Bryan has more about what the scammers are asking for and what you should do if you're a victim. Yeah, I just hung up on the um, phone with a citizen that reported that someone was claiming to be part of the sheriff's office and give him a call back. The Green County Sheriff's Office says these calls are becoming way too common. It's becoming more frequent. Uh, a couple weeks ago, a lot of citizens were calling in saying that someone was claiming to be an official from the Sheriff's Office and that um, they needed to take care of a fine and they could pay it over the phone, which is something we don't ever do. The Springfield Police Department has also been told that people are receiving scam calls with the callers saying they are local officers. We are so blessed to live in a community that is so supportive of our, our police officers and the police department. And you're right, there are a, a lot of people out there who take advantage of the great community that we live in. The caller says they are raising funds for the department. Neither the Springfield Police Foundation or the Springfield Police Officers Association will demand money over the phone, and both are independent of the Springfield Police Department. So yes, if you do become a victim and you are out uh, money in any amount, please call us 864-1810 to file a police report. The Better Business Bureau says to never give money or your personal information over the phone until you verify the information and says there are a couple of reasons these scammers will use police departments in their scams. A lot of times it's about giving up money or personal information or it's a sense of uh, trying to honor. If it's a charity saying they're soliciting for law enforcement uh, organization, they, they appreciate the work that law enforcement does in our community. So but why use law enforcement? When it comes to scammers impersonating law enforcement organizations, they're trying to use intimidation. The BBB says a legitimate organization will have no problem waiting for you to verify who is calling and to do your research before making a donation. Meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney joins us for a first look at the weather. So it was a pretty dreary day with this rain. It's 52 in Joplin right now and 51 in Pittsburgh. Those tempers are going to drop a bit. Traffic's a little slow in Joplin because of those rainy conditions, and it's going to continue through the evening hours. We see pretty widespread light but consistent rain with some patches of heavier rain. And if we zoom out, we'll see it's coming in from the southeast, and it's going to continue on into tomorrow. If we take a look, we'll see where it's going to get heaviest. Uh, Saturday evening, we'll see it kind of get heavy right here. And coming in off our southeast, we'll see that start to move in. And by midnight, we'll get a heavy bit of rain right in our central counties, right in Joplin and Parsons. And then we'll also experience some pretty fast wind gusts moving through tonight and tomorrow morning. But I'll bring you more details in just a bit. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Well, former President Donald Trump's trial on plotting to overturn the results of the 2020 election has been postponed. A federal judge in Washington says the trial, which was set to start on March 4th, is on hold as a key legal appeal from Mr. Trump continues to make its way through the courts. A federal appeals court still needs to resolve a pending appeal from Trump, arguing that he has immunity from prosecution for actions he took as president. Trump faces four in indictments and 91 felony counts. Friday evening, the U.S. launched airstrikes in Iraq and Syria, targeting Iranian-backed militants. The U.S. launched the strikes in response to the deadly attacks earlier this week that killed three U.S. soldiers and injured more than 40 others. The airstrikes coming just hours after the soldiers' remains returned home. Jen Sullivan looks at how these fallen troops were honored and how the U.S. is responding. Under dreary skies in Delaware, the remains of three U.S. soldiers killed earlier this week returned to U.S. soil Friday. 
Sergeant William Rivers and two Army specialists who were posthumously promoted to the rank of Sergeant Kennedy Sanders and Breonna Moffitt were killed Sunday following a drone strike in Jordan. U.S. officials blaming Iran-backed militants. Days before their remains returned home, President Joe Biden calling the grieving families to express his deepest condolences. I wish I didn't have to make this call. Kennedy Sanders' mother breaking down on the call. One percent, one percent of all these kids are the ones that uh, take care of 99 percent of us. Friday, the three soldiers were honored in what's known as a dignified transfer. Just hours after their remains came home, the U.S. retaliating, striking more than 85 targets linked to Iran-backed militias in Iraq and Syria. We need to make clear coming after U.S. soldiers is unacceptable. I think this is an important first step. There are fears that any action the U.S. takes could further impact the Israel-Hamas war and broaden tensions it has sparked in the Middle East. What concerns me the most is how many different ways this region could completely erupt into full-scale war. Earlier in the week, President Biden cautiously saying this. I don't think we need a wider war in the Middle East. Friday night, the president now saying the U.S. will continue its response at, quote, times and places of our choosing. I'm Jen Sullivan reporting. Coming up, we take a look at how the nationwide trucker shortage is impacting businesses in Arkansas. Plus, Delta and American Express are raising their fees, but adding some perks for members. The nationwide truck driver shortage is lingering and even impacting some city services in Arkansas. Qualified drivers with the commercial driver's license remain hard to find, and Little Rock Public Works is familiar with that struggle. Brooke Buckner has the story. There's always a need for them. We're constantly filling those top jobs. Eric Petty with Little Rock Public Works says, although it's better than it was a couple years ago, it's still a struggle to fill open positions. We're actually making a little bit of adjustments on the size of equipment we buy. Some of our patch trucks for patching potholes are a little bit smaller, so we can do it with non-commercial driver's license people. Petty says that's just what has to happen for city workers to get the job done. And we've got to address our drainage, keep our streets in the best condition we can. He's currently short about eight drivers, but he says he's glad to see more applicants than in previous years. If they actually show up and do an interview, there's actually a good chance of getting a job offer. Although the truck driver shortage is slightly improving, according to the Arkansas Truckers Association, we're still in big need of them. We're competing against other industries who are also very aggressively pursuing, you know, available workers. Shannon Newton with the ATA says nationally we're short about 60,000 drivers and statewide it's about 2,500. It's not just anyone who you would want to employ in that position. So it's a it's a shortage of qualified individuals who have those characteristics and the certification to do the job. Newton says this shortage is several years in the making and isn't going to be fixed overnight, but she and other groups are pushing for solutions. Compensation package, um, work environment, new equipment, you know, desirable routes and predictable home time, all of those things are part of the solution. The cost of filling up is going up. The national average for a gallon of regular is $3.15 according to AAA. That's a four cent hike from last month. On the plus side, it's also a 35 cent drop from this time last year. Analysis say the recent increase is likely caused by rising oil costs and a higher demand from drivers. The most expensive gas is in Hawaii at nearly $4.68 per gallon. Delta Airlines and American Express credit card holders can expect new benefits and higher fees. The company say Sky Miles members will now earn credits by using their card at some restaurants, rideshares, and Delta Stay accommodations. Gold members can earn up to $300, while reserve business members can earn up to $610. American Express says cardholders can expect fees to increase between $50 to $100 when their membership renews or after May 1st. A little later, College Heights and Macaulay Catholic High School battle it out on the Mercy Warrior Classic. We'll have the highlights in sports. Meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney here talking about the rain that we've got going on this weekend. Started off this morning and will kind of increase as we move into the overnight hours. 
Taking a look outside at our Cornell Complex camera, downtown Joplin, we see it's light rain, but it is pretty wet out there with some overcast conditions, so it's not looking too pretty right now like we've seen the last couple of days. So we do see this rain kind of pick up a little bit. In our western counties, we see some patches of heavier rain and maybe a few patches across the central counties. And as we zoom out, we'll see this rain still making its way into our area. It'll affect us all the way until tomorrow evening. Pretty consistent rain, but there may be some patches of heavier rain as we move in through the overnight hours. Temperature right now in Joplin is 52 degrees. It will cool off as that rain starts to come in some more. Visibility is getting a little bit low, so five miles right now. The uh, traffic's getting a little bit backed up with those wet conditions. Winds are picking up about 15, 20 miles per hour out of the east, um, and it's gusting up to about 38 in Carthage, 34 in Mount Vernon, so it's getting pretty gusty winds coming out of the southeast over here. This is going to continue on as we move into the overnight hours. Starting off Sunday morning, we do see some winds pick back up right over here up to 30 miles per hour gusts out of the northeast. So those winds are starting to shift coming out from the north and they'll continue to shift. The winds will start to diminish as we move into tomorrow evening. But tonight that rain is going to continue. It will pick up as we move into the overnight hours around midnight. Uh, tonight, temperatures will drop down to about 48, 47 degrees. And as we make our way through tomorrow morning, that rain does start to taper off a little bit. By 4 p.m. tomorrow, it's almost made its way out of here. Not quite. We still see some light showers through the afternoon hours tomorrow. But 7.30 tonight, we see patch of heavy rain here, patch of heavy rain here making its way into our area. By midnight tonight, we'll see patch of heavy rain right here in Parsons, in Joplin. So that'll continue, but by the time we get to the morning hours on Sunday, it'll lighten up pretty much across the region. Those winds are starting to shift as they shift. It's going to push that rain back south, so it'll be moving out of our area by Sunday evening. Then the clouds start to clear as we move into morning hours on Monday. We can expect to see about an inch of rain across the region, maybe a little bit less right over here in our western counties, maybe a little bit more in our central counties, but for the most part about an inch across the region. Then we do see it start to uh, warm back up. 61 on Tuesday, 60 on Wednesday and up to 63 on Thursday. Thursday we do have some showers coming in that will cool off the temperatures again just a bit moving into next weekend dropping back down to about 50 on Monday 53 on Tuesday. Still ahead the Pitt State men's and women's basketball teams look to continue their win streak and high school hoops continue in the four states. Brock Baldridge has the highlights from that game and more up next. Well, both the men's and women's basketball teams from Pitt State are on the road this weekend. These are There are only eight games left remaining in the regular season. Each team is on a three-game winning streak. The women's team is in Newman this afternoon. Pitt State really dominated this game from start to finish. Gorillas win 83-43. Grace Pyle scored 16 points. And Savannah Campbell scored 15 points of her own, including her first career double-double. Over to the men's side now, Pitt State wins this game 77 to 60. The Gorillas now make it four straight wins in a row. The freshman Jordan Fryson scores a career high 24 points. Marquis English had a double double in this game. Pitt State improves to 13 8 on the season. Over to Missouri Southern now, the women's Lions basketball team now makes it 14 wins in a row as they defeated Central Oklahoma 64 to 58. The Lions are now 17 4 on the year. And the Missouri Southern men's team also in action today. The Lions lose a close one to Central Oklahoma, 65 to 61. Final score there. Southern travels back home to face Lincoln on Wednesday night. Over to high school hoops now in the Mercy Warrior Classic. It wraps up this week as Macaulay Catholic High School. They host a handful of local teams who have a shot to bring home some hardware. In the third place game, it's the host team Macaulay Catholic against the College Heights Cougars who start things off in the first quarter. It's Michael Paragon who goes in for the paint for the layup here. Later in the first, after a juggling act for the basketball here, it's Ben Shoemaker who is in the right place at the right time. Puts it in for two points on the mid-range jumper. In the second quarter, Broderick Burns is open for three. He swishes that one home. College Heights goes into halftime with a double-digit lead. Later in the second half, Colson Dickens shoots and scores from beyond the arc. 
Cougars lead by 16. Now Macaulay Catholic showing some fight now as Rocco Bazzano Joseph gets nothing but net for the three. But then Caleb Quaid of College Heights takes over in this game as he finishes the little alley-oop there for the putback. And then Quaid, who goes up for the dunk here, gets to the rim and the foul. He finished with 25 points in this game. College Heights gets the win 58 to 40. The Cougars bring home the third place trophy. Now on to the girls championship game. It's the Aurora Hound Dogs facing Providence Christian Academy. In the opening minutes of the game, it's Kylie Cole who scores the first points of the game with a quick three pointer there in the corner. Still in the first quarter, it's Brooke Levins who dribbles around the defense here and just gets enough mustard right there. She puts it in for two points. Later in the half, it's McKenna Hall, gets nothing but net for the three. Hound Dogs lead by one at that point, but in the second quarter, it's Kylie Cole. The bank is open for number 23 there. She's still celebrating that 1,000th career point that she scored earlier in the week. But in the second quarter, the game really starts to slip away from Aurora as Anna Imbo knocks down the three-pointer three there in transition. Later in the half, it's Hadley Williams, who's all alone beyond the arc. No one's there to stop her and she drains it. Aurora puts up a good fight, but Providence wins the game 49 to 35. Lady Hound Dogs finish in second place at the Mercy Warrior Classic. Well, college basketball season continues and we are just getting things started. On the college baseball side, Missouri Southern gets the win over Arkansas Monticello, 10 to six, the final score. Lions back at it tomorrow. But stay also in action today, taking on New Mexico Highlands University in Oklahoma City. Gorillas win this game 11 to two. Joe Hamilton went four for five with a double, a triple, and three RBIs. So we're already talking baseball season. It right. still feels like we're in the middle of basketball season, but uh, you know, all baseball and softball teams winning today. And you know what? With this past weather this week, just with the baseball, you know, it's it's about time. I was about it's to about say time. We, we covered a game at Pittsburgh earlier this week, and I was like, I think that's the warmest I've ever been in that stadium. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks, Brock. We'll be right back. When it comes to the most neighborly NFL star, it's no surprise as to who took the top spot in a recent survey. Kansas City Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey. A recent survey from Zillow found that Kelsey was the most wanted next door neighbor for the women for women ages 18 to 34. His Chiefs teammate Patrick Mahomes took the second place spot and Baltimore Raven, Ravens wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. rounded out the top three. So that rain does start to make its way out of our area Sunday evening. Temperatures drop, but they'll warm back up as we move into next week. Thursday, we do see some showers. Temperatures 63 degrees, but those showers are going to cool some things off as we move into end of next weekend and 50 degrees on Monday. Gorgeous week, mm -hmm. the gorgeous week that we've had. These 60 degree weathers in February, being from Minnesota, I mean, yeah. it's unheard of, unheard <laughs> of. But yeah, final sports note. Well, final sports note, uh, Pitt State softball, they win the game off a walk-off home run. And back to that last story with Travis Kelsey. Yeah. I mean, what would it take for you to pay Travis Kelsey to be your next door neighbor? Well, I don't think I have <laughs> millions of dollars, Brock. I mean, do I look like I have millions of dollars? You never know. I know, but you know, that's, it'll be exciting to see them next week in the Super Bowl. I mean, after, after everything, I can't believe we made it to this point. After everything, and you know, with the whole Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift controversy, and a lot of fans were upset, you know, does she get too much airtime, does all she right, not? Yeah. But you know what? They're in the Super Bowl, and that's all that matters. And it only comes down to one game. And you really have a coin flip to win it now. Any so, given Sunday. Any given Sunday. So it should be interesting to see. Uh, really excited to see. Uh, I, one thing I think many people are talking about is the Chiefs fans, you gotta be careful when you play a team that you've already beaten the Super Bowl, you know, how much motivation will they have to come back that next week? So it should be interesting to see, you know, can the Chiefs get up for this Absolutely. game? And, uh, based off the playoff run they had, no reason why they can't. No reason why they can. It'll be exciting. And a rematch of 2020 Super Bowl as well, which rematch I think a lot of, of fans Super are excited yes. to see. Should all right. Be exciting. Thanks, Brock. Well, that's our time for now. And from all of us in the studio, have a great night.